Good evening. It is Sunday. I just got home not too long ago from work and looked at a bunch of my comments and went, wow. I have one bad day. And yes, okay, there has been a week long of me being fr frustrated and whatnot. And it comes out a little bit on here. But one day, one day where I just cannot handle my frustration and cannot handle the situation and erupt on my channel... And I get a buttload of comments. And not all of them are constructive. In fact, 90% of them were deconstructive. And all I have to say to those of you who basically decided on the day that I just could not contain my anger and frustration with the world and bring it out on, on YouTube, y'all decided to basically try to jump down my throat. Well, you know what? Fine, dandy. Um... That's fine, but it's just amazing how the negativity of one day, one event, brings out the bulk of the people, which basically tells me that the bulk of those people are just trolls looking for people who are having a bad day to make it worse. So all I can say to you folks is, if you don't like the fact that there was one day that I just basically let it all out, there's a door, don't let it hit you in the rear end. But for those of you, for an, a couple of you, I'm going to actually answer some of your questions. And I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. The bottom. And I'm going to call you out on this. 92, uh, 22 chill or chili. China's to blame for the COVID? Okay, that's a yes and no. It did start in China. It's because of the fact that China, China has an overpopulation for one, to their food, food safety, food handling, and their open food markets. Now, that's what I heard. It started in an open food market. I don't know. Some people say it started in a lab. I don't know. I don't know where it started in China. Yes, it did start in China. But for the number of cases that we've had here in the United States, that's on our government. Not on China. China, it may have started there, but it is not their 100% fault. Okay? Once we knew what was happening and what was going on, and before it became such a so quickly widespread situation, it could have been nipped in the bud. That's my answer to your comment. The second person, Goldie. She wants me to get back to my old videos. Goldie, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get back to where I was. But there's been a series of events, both both personal and politi both personal and political and just worldwide events that weigh down on me. I know a lot of people tell me I shouldn't be worried about what's going on on around the world, that I should worry about myself. Well, unfortunately. I keep an eye on the world. I keep an eye on various events happening globally. Um, everything from the pandemic to natural events to unnatural, you know, various different types of unnatural events. And I, I'm i starting to step back away from looking at all that stuff because it's becoming a bit of a negative pattern, which is causing me to become the person that I was the other day. Um... So yeah, we're we're try we're trying to get there, Goldie. In fact, uh, my the last person I'm going to talk about and some of her questions and comments um, will help you understand what I'm going to try. I'm trying to do. Um, Linda, I did not write down your last name because at least there's two of you in here now. Linda, first off, the idea of basically me having no clue what I'm saying is wrong because this factor. I spend way too much time researching stuff before I start talking about it. So, if you think what I'm saying is wrong, do me a favor. Two two things you need to do to, to basically have your statement be correct. One, listen to what I'm saying. Don't try to analyze it. Don't try to fucking, excuse my language, don't try to go and underline, read between lines or whatever, because that's just going to get you nowhere. And two... 
If you hear something that you think I'm wrong about, research it. If you can research it and you can give me your source information and I read it and I find out that I'm wrong, I'll apologize and correct it. I'm not above and beyond that. And as for my the guest room bed here being uh, unclean since uh, Jerry's birthday, that's also a wrong statement. You know why? Because during Jerry's birthday, it was clean because her sister slept on it. And then after her sister left for at least two nights, her one of her best friends who came to visit slept on it. So the bed's only been messy like this for, i say since probably late August, early September. Or is it late August, early October? I, I don't, I, my months right now are messed up. But... Yeah, that's also a wrong statement. So I just proved you twice to be wrong, Linda. If you don't like that, well, there's already a lot of people jumping off my channel because they didn't like that one day, that one day everybody's uh, upset about. So they all want to just go bye-byes. Well, that's fine. You want to go bye-byes because I had one day where I blew my stack, including today now, because of what's been going on around the world and people are just... Acting like it's a freaking joke. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. All you Karens can leave now. Because I'm done with you. I, again, you, I've, I've been trying to contain myself and whatnot. But things have just been getting out of control. Not only just around the world, but on this. And yeah, I know it's mostly my fault. Because I'm the one who's doing all the talking. And I'm just listening to your comments. Or reading your comments. But the problem is, if you want to act this way because of, of me having one really bad day that I let you guys see, that's fine. That's fine. You know, I can weed you out. As a good, as the Bible, and, and not, well, I shouldn't say just the Bible, but as society has done in the past, or as uh, uh, farmers used to do in the old days before machinery, they beat the weed off the chaff. So, yeah, if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. Last one, Sheila. Now, Sheila and Nelly have basically been very good people. They've, they've been polite about their comments, and they have politely told me how or what was going wrong or what content or category as one person said uh all right i agree politics is not my good point politics politics have caused me a lot of a headache so as of this afternoon reading this I, i'm not going to talk about politics but i'm going to say one last thing about politics for those of you who believe that i am bashing trump or this nation because of Trump, go look up your facts. I'm not the only one. I'm just reiterating or repeating what they are saying. And that's the last I'm going to say about politics. But Sheila, she asked me, um, or she basically suggested or said that she enjoys my videos when I talk about how I'm feeling or what ways I am changing my have been trying to. Unfortunately, I've, I've backslid a couple times this week. My mind, body, and spirit for the better. Well, Sheila, thank you very much for, for the reminder. Uh, because of certain events that have happened personally and globally, I've been having issues. As you have noticed in the last couple of days with some of my, my videos being a little obnoxious. Um, I, yeah, um, I'm going to be trying to get back to that. We're getting closer to the holiday season and I don't mean like Thanksgiving. I mean like the holiday season. We're talking about Halloween just uh, was around the corner. Uh, Thanksgiving is basically this week. Then we've got Christmas within a couple weeks and then the new year. Well, there's a lot of things that happen around this house during this time of year because we do the decorations around the house. In fact, as soon as I break out Christmas decorations, um, 
I'm just going to lift this up real quick. As you notice, my new book area, I have not started to decorate it yet. In fact, I took down the Halloween stuff because I actually realized I have some Christmas decorations that I used to put on my desk. Uh, so my desk will get some Christmas decor. I think I have a mini Christmas tree, some lights, a few other different little fun things. Uh, I've requested from Jayanne uh, as soon as she can. I'm not trying to push her. I want her to make another sock gnome that she had made a while back. And I want to basically have it sitting on my desk in every season or every holiday. I can change out his hat for something a little bit more for the season or for the festivities. Um, I'm hoping now that I've got things set up with this books bookshelf and ideas and plans I have for the top of the desk and around the bookcase and whatnot that things will start to basically make me feel a little more home homey and a little bit more uh settled I guess you'd say um Sheila also asks what what am I thankful for for Thanksgiving well, you know what, to be honest with you, Sheila, I have not really thought about it lately because I have been so busy with changes at work, changes at home, trying to get things back to a positive place here at my home because we're, Jerry's still suffering from her depression because of, of her brother passing away. I'm suffering right along with her because of <sighs> memories being stirred up. No, I'm not getting teary. I'm getting nasally because it's that time of year. And I ran out of my regular nose spray. And the what I'm using doesn't work that well. Or at least it doesn't work 24 hours. Ah, probably going to have to get a shot. Nose spray shot. Sorry. Uh, but off the top of my head, what I can be thankful for, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people say all the time, but I'm really thankful for the roof over my head, the gift of this tapestry, my wife still being here, my mom still being here, having food on the table, even though we're going through some rough patches. I'm pretty sure anybody who's watched any of Jerry Ann's videos or in, in this right now, I haven't seen a lot of her videos. We haven't done any extra shopping. We haven't gone to a Dollar Tree or a Dollar General or any of those thrift stores in, since September. Um, there's a lot of things that we haven't done that a lot of you are used to watching. I haven't put as many shopping with, with, shop with me videos because a lot of times we go, we pick up necessities and we come home and it's like, do we really want to record a video of stuff that we buy on a regular basis because it's a necessity? So, you know, but still, I am very, very thankful for what I have. Uh, yes, there are times where I wish I could have more. Uh, yes, there are times where I wish I could be someplace else. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of things that I could want and wish for, but I'm thankful for what I have because I have by far uh, more than people in the same situation I'm in. Uh, in fact, there are people not only that are either not as well off as I am, but there are people who have lost a lot because of the various situations. I mean, Lost family members, lost friends, lost jobs, lost homes. There's a lot of things people have lost. And you know what? A lot of those people are thankful for what they have, still that they still have. Um, I don't wish it upon anybody because, of factor, I've never really been in the situation, closest I've ever been in a situation of not having anything but myself and a very cheap very bad apartment for a short period of time was just between my father pat well between me leaving my house because i knew i couldn't live there no more because of the situation in the house after my dad died and getting into um a program called uh 
LDI or Life Development Institute. Um, I was living off of my father's uh, military benefits that I was granted until I was 21. I didn't live off of it until 21, but that's how long I had until. But it was barely enough to pay for the Roach Motel that I was living in and food and utilities. And even with food and utilities, uh, food was, I skimped on food because paying for my bills was more important at the time. Uh, Sheila also asked, any New York resolutions? I have a lot. I mean, a lot of uh, re uh, resolutions. And... There's too many of them in the list on here, but the ones that are on the top of the list would be to to continue better, bettering myself, even though I have my moments where just it's too much colliding at once. Uh, I I I need better better time management, better emotional man management. Uh, <clears throat> Jerry and I have talked <clears throat> from time to time, but I have not really stepped forward to do it, but I think that one of the things I need to do in the new year is basically um, something I don't really trust, but I'm going to try it for her because it's for her. Oh, that is really stuffed. Is basically going to see a going to see an actual person or an actual uh, psychiatrist. I just don't, I'm going to literally explain to a psychiatrist, I don't trust medications because of what's happened in the past, but I'm willing to at least try. Because, I mean, I can sit here all I want and go, no, 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 and nothing will get better because I'm not trying. That's the same thing with when I started the whole uh, Northway diet and trying to do the Nordic diet and the Nordic foods and whatnot was because, in fact, I knew that I needed to start doing more to um, better my health by food intake. Um, problem we've been having lately, and I know it's what I mean by we, is it's not really me and Jerry, because me and Jerry are trying our best to eat healthy and be healthier, but my mom, who at first was all gung-ho about it, but for some reason... Some reason when Jerry Ann got back and when Jerry Ann and I had talked in in detail and, and for a long period of time, uh, we both realized that we need to eat. We can't just eat the Nordic way because the Nordic way has a lot of healthy foods. But the problem with the Nordic way that I've discovered is because of Jerry Ann can't eat a lot of carbs, she's trying to cut carbs out of her diet, so there are certain foods like potatoes, rice, um, breads, basically foods that have a lot of carbs. She can't really have because it's not good for her. And so we were trying to eat that way, but mom and her, whatever goes on mom's head, I can't tell you. I don't want to sound like I'm bashing my mother because I'm not. I love her to pieces. But she has a lot of unhealthy habits i know that i had the unhealthy habit of drinking way 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 too much soda i've cut it down to one can a day in fact today i didn't have any soda until i came home and i just took a sip and put it in the refrigerator uh but i've been trying to cut i've been trying to cut soda out literally just soda out in fact Jerry Ann had asked if I wanted to buy a six pack or a 12 pack of soda when I was out getting some stuff at our local Kroger. I said, no, I want to cut the soda out. If I have a soda, it's going to be a small amount at work. I don't want to be buying a whole 12 pack with the temptation of sneaking an extra can here and there. No, I'm trying to cut that out. But mom has her addictions to Coca-Cola and smoking and she gets she's get she got back to being very picky on vegetables when she was eating vegetables galore when we were doing the Nordic way but now that we're doing more 
keto and diabetic friendly foods, she's like picking at, she's not taking in vegetables or she's not eating a whole lot of vegetables, which causes me unconsciously to do the same. And it's like, no, 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 I've got to fight that. I've got to do better. So that's one of the things that I want to do in the new year is to basically ignore, not trying to say like, not pay attention to mom, but basically ignore her eating habits and her bad habits, basically. Um, so that's one of the things that I want to really, I have to basically stop getting mad at mom for making her bad choices and making my own. I need to basically say, that's her choice. She can do whatever we want. I'm a grown man. I can eat whatever I want. And in fact, I should be eating more salads and, and fruits and vegetables and things like that and less less carbs less breads less sugars less artificial thankfully we've practically cut out all artificial box meals every software will have a artificial like package of garlic roasted mashed potatoes i love gar garlic roasted mashed potatoes the thing is mashed potatoes aren't really all that good for you if you have certain issues like high cholesterol diabetes, things that I basically are either have or could get. So I need to cut out the potatoes and the white rice and the things like that. So yeah, I have those, that New Year's resolution that I have the New Year's resolution is just basically getting better all around mentally, physically, spiritually. I need the whole, I need to work on the whole package. I know a lot of people are probably listening to me going, but how are you going to work on yourself spiritually when you are having issues with your religious? No. Religion and spirituality or the spirit itself, the health of your spirit, does not always contain or has to do with religion. That I learned a long time ago when I was still doing a lot of different religious searches, soul searching, whatever you want to call it. And I found out through various different religious groups saying your spirit, the health of your spirit and your religion or your, or your, yeah, your religion, basically not your spirituality because they're two different things. Even though a lot of people say, no, they're not. Um, in fact, I'm going to write myself a note to talk about that on a different video because Somebody, hold on, I got to poke a second. Religion versus spirituality or the spirit. Somebody had basically said, uh, I don't remember the person's name, but they had a comment about how I must be a, a bigot because or not a bigot that's the wrong word that's something totally different jim um well not remembering the exact word but basically saying i was a sinner because i follow both christianity and paganism no i do not follow paganism i follow the norse people and their beliefs and their their mythology and all that but my roots are based in Christianity. Just because you're a Christian does not mean you cannot explore to understand your fellow man, even though your fellow man may not believe the same thing you do. How do you think we're supposed to get along? Are we supposed to basically go around slapping that, that religious label on everybody? Oh, you're pagan. We can't deal with you. Or the pagan's going to, oh, you're Christian. We can't. No. Norse people not just their pagan religion, but Norse people believe that all mankind can get along. What causes the Norse people or the Norse pagans to get mad at the Christians is because the Christians are trying to force them to convert to their belief system. That's how Norse pagans basically died out or became a quiet group of people because they realized that if the, there, there are two different rulers, two different kings from the 
from the Norse people who basically realized that if he did not convert and try to get some of his people to convert, to basically say, hey, yes, we're Christians, we'll, we'll listen to what you have to say, is because they didn't want their people to be basically slaughtered by the Christians who were forcing conversion. And that's all I'm going to say at this point in time. The next question Sheila has to ask, or doesn't have to, but she asked politely, is what am I going to try to to incorporate North foods into the holidays? Well, to be honest with you, Sheila, uh, I want to. I'm trying to. Um, but a lot of the foods that I'm discovering that they have for the holidays are mostly right now, most of the recipes that I've been able to find and I'm still looking is the different cakes or sweets or goodies uh, that they basically bake for the holidays. The thing is, trying to find recipes of authentic Norse uh, foods are kind of hard because back then they didn't have recipes. It was all basically what tasted good to them. And they had limited foods during the wintertime. It was basically whatever they can catch in the water after hacking a hole through the ice or whatever livestock that they had with them for the wintertime, like pig, pork, beef, chicken, you know, rabbit, whatever game that they can catch that was still running loose during the wintertime because the winters up in the North uh, territories during this time of the year are quite cold and quite frozen. So they might cook up a whole suckling pig for their banquet, their feast. They might have choice pieces of beef. They may have some fish. They may make stew, uh, fish stew or porridge stew or a type of porridge for, for their breakfast meals. Um, but for the most part, they use a lot of like dehydrated or dried fruit, uh, fruits and vegetables and whatever grains they may have. In fact, I think I, I, I might have to look it up, but I think fruit, the idea of fruit cake, which is not the same as what we have now is probably came from the Scandinavians or the Nordic people because a lot of their a lot of their sweets or a lot of their cakes and whatnot was made with whatever dehydrated fruits fruits and vegetables they may have, plus grains, plus milk from the cows that they kept alive. So as for trying to do Nordic or Norse foods for the holidays, I want to. I really do. I want to look into it. I've got a month to do it in. So we'll see. But the thing is, like I said a little, a little, uh, a few minutes ago, I'm trying to get into a healthy food routine, and because I have to be mindful of what Jerry eats because of her restrictive diet, because of her diabetes and her, uh, you know, thing, uh, things like that. But we have not talked to the doctor since we got our crest, our our blood results in because. The next appointment we could establish is was uh, December 15th because she wanted to see us every three months. So December, not 15th, 17th. December 17th, we have a follow-up with her. I'm kind of surprised when I saw the, my results that I did not get a phone call from the doctor's office saying, come and see me right away. I didn't, so it's not like an emergency, a panic situation. Uh, but I'm pretty sure she's going to tell me to cut back on my sugar intake, cut back on the white potatoes and rice and bread and things. You know, I have a genetically higher than normal cholesterol level, uh, which I knew, I've known for for years now. But what has been a concern of Jerry's, especially more than mine, is my sugar levels because I also have the genetically high sugar levels due to a family history or, or my bloodline basically having high cholesterol, uh, diabetes, heart problems, uh, allergy problems, uh, bronchial issues, you know, uh, 
thank God we've never had any kind of like cancers. We've never had, the only person I know of in my family that's ever had a heart problem was my Aunt Kay. She had to have um, triple heart bypass surgery. She had a number of strokes and whatnot. But she's the only one out of the family. Otherwise, it's just like monitor your blood pressure, monitor your sugars, monitor your cholesterol intake, things like that. I have to take those into account because of family history. So a lot of my choices and changes that I've been trying to make slowly have be been because of, mostly because of Jerry Ann. Because I'll be honest with you, if Jerry Ann was not in my life, I probably would never have gone to a doctor. I probably would never have known what my issues are. And I probably would not be alive right now. Because when I was younger, I didn't know better. I just ate and drank whatever I felt like and didn't worry about the side effects. Because I didn't see any side effects. But now that I'm getting older, I see the side effects. I mean, my teeth, that's partially because of my sugar intake and just bad enamel, bad DNA, um, my aches and pains, my various issues that I have, most likely because of food, food intake. Food is a major contributor to a lot of, of our health issues that we have as people. Not just me, but other people who have similar conditions or similar issues. <clears throat> now, I didn't bring a drink in here. I forgot to... That factor I had a complaint about, oh, I, I don't, I think it's rude that you drink while you're doing your video. Well, it's either I choke and cough a lot or I drink. So, yeah. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to say this and I want to be sincere about this. It might come off a little bit rough. It might come off a little bit rude, but I'm sincere about this. I know a lot of people take offense to some of the things that I say. And I know people get rubbed the wrong way when I start talking about politics. That's why I normally do not talk about politics. But lately, the heat of what's going on politically charged me in a bad way. And I apologize for rubbing you guys the wrong way. I really do. Because I don't mean to rub people the wrong way. I don't mean to get people upset at me. I don't like the idea of having to have comments that just ever because people got the wrong, wrong way. I know there's one or two of you who have basically stated that it is my channel and I have the right to basically say what I choose to say. Just like you you have, you guys have the right to say what you say or choose to say what you say. But here's the issue. This is an issue that I discovered and it's a, it's a scientifically proven issue. That negativity begets negativity. But basically what that means is if you're negative, people are more negative or more likely to respond negatively to a negative comment, yet most people will not or have not feel the need to reply in any way, given shape or form to a positive comment. That's why I appreciate viewers like Sheila and Nelly who have been on this channel since the get-go and have recently, within the last month or more, making comments or asking questions, no matter what my mood is or how I come off, in a positive manner. Those two people have always been in a positive manner, positively making suggestions or politely saying, hey, we know you're upset, but let's go back to what you are doing before when you weren't upset. Go back to the days before things were making you upset that you made a bad video. I appreciate that. I really do. Both Sheila and Nelly have been very good very good people because they've asked me a lot of good questions. They made comments that made me think more. Their comment, their questions have made me think more. In general, those two people have been not only polite advocates for positivity, but polite advocates towards steering me back onto that that positive path that I was on. 
And I love you two for I I really love the two of you for that. In fact, one of you and I I'm sorry I forget who does who gives me gifts. I I don't. My mind doesn't always hold that information. I think it was Shiva that sent me the tapestry behind me because it's a Nordic tapestry. It's a Nordic symbol. Just because I have that behind me, I do a lot of my videos with that behind me. Don't think that I'm following the old school pagan belief system. No. There are plenty of Norse people who claim to be Norse, follow the the lifestyle or the idealism of the Norse ancestors, but they are not full-blown practitioners of the pagan belief system. So, no, I'm still a Christian. I still believe in God, but I understand their gods. I understand their mythology behind their gods does not mean I follow them. In fact, I've been reading a book called, I think it's called Norse Mythology. I don't know, I don't remember the exact words, but it has to do with their mythology. And it's not just their mythology, it's their, some of their famous leaders, like Leif Erikson and Eric the Red. Um, I haven't even gotten into their deities or the religious practices and whatnot. I've gotten into their historical figures and what they did that made them so famous. If if anybody wants to hear some of this information that I've been reading, I'll be more than happy to read it to you guys. Um, you just have to let me know. But to let you guys know what my one of my plans are for the new year since it was asked is on a second I don't know if you can see that real close but from that point on to most I'm sorry my phone just literally launched itself out of the holder I had so sorry for that flip but most of those books up there in that corner and most of these books down here up to that book right there by the clock. Those are all books on Christian. Those are all Christian books. I have plans to literally read practically all those books in the new year. There are a couple books up here on that second shelf off to the left that I didn't show you that are. Either Scandinavian in nature or Norse in nature. One of them is called the Vikings. The other one is called, uh, basically, it's the word, I can't pronounce the word, but it's translated in free air living. It's basically a book on getting out, living closer to nature, being open, aired, letting out your, doing whatever you have to, to live happily, basically, uh, within a certain means. I plan on doing that. I want to do that. The other one is just like... I can't remember what it's called without pulling it down. I don't feel, feel like pulling it down. I want to get off this so I can go get some eat because I haven't eaten yet today. Well, no. I don't want to get off. I want to air something out. And I want to try to be as positive as I can be about this. One of the problems I've been having lately, and it's it's a combination of anxiety and just feeling overwhelmed. I'm going to try to hold it together. The anxiety is about work, and the overwhelming is about work. It's also about home. The anxiety and being overwhelmed at work is the fact that now that I'm proven myself that I can handle doing what we call the board, which is basically, it is... Position one, that basically the people, the customer come up, comes up to you and tells you what meat products they want to eat. And they make their choice. Whether it's pulled pork, sliced brisket, a pulled pork sandwich, sliced brisket sandwich, whatever it is. Basically it has to do with our meat. And I'm the one who basically has to cut it to weight and cut it to desired 
whatever they want, whether they want a sandwich or or not. Um, when it gets busy, I get a little nervous, I get a little anxiety, and I slow down for two reasons. One, so I get the orders correct. Two, so I don't cut my fingers off. And then when I have to do that, and I have to do that for the bulk of the day, when I get home, I'm done for the day. I'm literally, I have nothing left. But then I have to come home, and nine times out of ten, I am asked, what are we having for dinner? Uh, I, what? And then I start getting overwhelmed and anxious at home because the factor, I've... I've had a rough day. I'm done for the day. I, I, I have no brain cells left, no thoughts left, no, as Jerry would put it, no spoons left to give. I'm, I've drained myself, and I don't like doing that because there's so much I need to do around the house, or I'm asked to do around the house because mom can't do it. Jerry Ann has either spent her energy or just doesn't have any energy, energy to do anything because her energy lately has been really, really low due to depression. And I understand this, but then I get overwhelmed and, and get easily upset. And I know that's not right on either side. It's not right of her to do it to me. It's not right for me to do what I do to her. There's a lot of not rights and we understand it, but sometimes it's like, I have, from time to time, the capacity to push aside my exhaustion, push aside my pain, and get through wherever I have to get through, because it's a necessity. It, I can't live, nobody can live in a house that's basically untidy, or unclean, or unmanaged. Same thing with work. We cannot work, health, we cannot work within a health code in a dirty, unclean, unfit store. I know a lot of people will say, well, maybe you should basically try to get unemployment or something along that line for health reasons. I would love to. Honestly, there are times where I would love to. But one, they're not going to pay me. They're not going to give me enough money to cover my bills. Two, in my brain and the way I was raised, that's an out. That's a quit. You quit, basically. You basically don't want to try to do anything for society or for the world. You want the world and society to give stuff to you. No, I'm sorry. I would love to say I've earned enough money in my lifetime to retire. I have not. I'm not even 50 years old. I know 50-year-old retirement was good for, like, my father. Well, no, because he didn't even retire. He still worked. But yeah, that would fifty years of age would be a great age of retirement, maybe back in the sixties, seventies. But nowadays, no, it's too expensive. It's too costly for for somebody with my bills to basically say I retire. I'm going to live off of what I get from retirement. No, partial unemployment. That would be nice, but you would have to have a document, legitimate medical reason for you to do that. And still, I would still have to work, but under the guise of a partial retirement or partial uh, partial uh, uh, unemployment is you still can work or should work. They allow you to work a maximum of like 30 hours, which is kind of what I'm doing right now, but... There's silver lining on this cloud, folks. I heard it today. The silver lining is <clears throat> my boss or store owner, however you want to call her, um, found out recently that her partner, basically her co-owner of the store, uh, is relinquishing their share. So, the owner, the Debbie, basically the person who hired me, basically I call my boss, put in, or some, I don't think she did it, I don't know how it was done, but we found out today that there's an ad on Facebook for a general manager for my store. And 
basically, Debbie basically said that Lisa, who has been running the store the last couple of weeks that Debbie's been out for family reasons, um, is basically a shoe in So if Lisa becomes general manager, that basically puts me my foot in the door for manager, not general manager, but like a shift manager. Which is great because both Lisa and I have experience in management. We both have experience in food services, uh, uh, years worth of, of experience in both. And basically, Lisa said if she gets general manager, she's going to put me as manager and we're going to make some major changes for the better of the store. Which, there's not very many changes that need to be made it's just like we need some new equipment we need some equipment repaired we need to start getting people to basically step up and do their job to the fullest now what we would like to do is be able to ha uh, hire at least one or two new people that we can train to do the job the way it should be done not the way people want to do it now I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be negative towards any of my coworkers, but there are some nighttime people who need to step up to the plate because they're falling behind. There's a lot of stuff that they're responsible for at nighttime that's either not getting done or it's getting done poorly. Does not mean they're bad people, it's just a factor that right now we're short staffed. We're very busy because of the holidays. In fact, I was supposed to come in Tuesday. It was supposed to be my day off, but I agreed to come in. She wanted me to come in at 4, but then we decided that it was best for me to come in at 2 or 3 because we have, we have at this moment, last count, 12 catering orders for Thanksgiving dinners. And the very first one is being picked up half an hour before we actually open our doors Wednesday. All 12 of these catering orders have to be done and picked up by their prospective purchase buyers before we close Wednesday night. So, because one of our nighttime people who, we didn't fire that person, she got arrested. I'm not going to say her name. Don't know what the conditions are. Just know what was transpired over the phone because I talked to her. So that's why I'm working Tuesday instead of having Tuesday off. And then Wednesday, well, Tuesday I'm closing. Wednesday I'm supposed to be there. Wednesday I'm there from like 10 in the morning to 6 p.m. at night to help out with these catering orders. Lisa is going to have to literally be there from 9.30 in the morning to at least 7, 7.30 at night because that's when the last catering order is getting picked up. So, there's a lot of good things going on. I'm getting more hours. I'm getting more... I'm making more money because of the hours I'm, I'm doing. So, that's a good thing. Now, the only thing that I'm concerned about, but it's something that I will worry about when it happens, is because, I be, because I, I'll be becoming a manager... Uh, I am clo a little bit closer than Lisa. She's about 10 minutes away. I'm about five from the store. So I could be getting calls at all hours of the day, which means I need to leave my ringer on and make sure I set a special ringtone for work. I've already got two in mind. Um, so when they call me, I know... If it's directly from work or directly from Lisa. So I wanna have fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna hopefully the changes that we have in, in in mind for the store will make things a whole lot better for everybody. Not that they're not that great right now, but there there's room for improvement. There's always room for improvement, no matter what the situation, no matter how good things are, there could be and usually is room for improvement in one way or another, whether it's small little things or great big things. Don't know. I know that there is room and there is a lot of room for improvement with me. And I am trying 
I, I guarantee, I, I, I swear, I am trying my best to make those changes. And with the help of people like Sheila and Nellie, they're happening. They're slow. Sometimes it's one, one foot forward, two foot back. But I am trying to make progress for the better. And for any of you who are viewing this video, who even though my last video was not the best uh, or the most positive video I've ever done, um... If you stuck with me and basically said, hey, wait a minute, let's give him another chance and see if his videos change. Well, I hope you did. And I hope they are changing for the better. I hope. So until next time, thank you very much for sticking with me. Have a good day. God bless. Goodbye.